This is our decade to clean up emissions. How do we as architects ensure that the buildings we design and remodel today assist and not hinder the making of a clean energy world? My answer is that building design must be energy design. We need to be as expert in building energy as we are in other areas of design and not let it be an afterthought. And the good news is, is that we have the digital tools to do that as an integrated part of the design process. I'm Tom Bassett-Dilley, architect and certified passive house consultant. In 2006, I formed TBDA to pursue sustainability, and I knew that energy efficiency would be central to the work. When the crash of 2009 slowed things down, I went to the Passive House Institute US, FIAS, to take certified Passive House Consultant training, and it was the best move I could have made. I left with the building science knowledge and energy modeling tools to thoroughly understand the energy impacts of design decisions in the design process. Knowledge is power. Let me give you a couple examples. This is a source zero passive house, source zero being FIAS's term for net zero, that the owners named Acorn Glade, certified last year after the solar PV went on. The aim here is with all our work was to marry performance and aesthetics, which means integrating the energy model from early schematic design. The idea was to create a compact, tough exoskeleton that peels back like an acorn where people and sunlight enter and to use sunlight to organize spaces inside. The focal space of this house is the stair hall with massive windows across from a wall of site salvage walnut. Once we have a massing concept in design, we make a simple SketchUp model of the thermal envelope and import it into Woofy Passive, the energy modeling program for FIAS certification. We use Woofy Passive for non-passive house projects as well. It's our go-to since it's detailed, comprehensive, and verified. There's a lot of input to get the model up and running, assembly R values, mechanical system performance, ventilation schedules, and the like. But given our experience, we can usually get a first pass in just a few hours. And that's when the fun begins. We have a lot of knobs to turn, so to speak, to see what different orientations, shading, windows, R values, air tightness levels, and appliance efficiencies have, not just on the overall energy, but also on the heating and cooling annual demand and peak loads. I think of it as a tool that we use to tune the building to its environment and to test the economics of solutions. The model also gives us an annual energy target to use in sizing the PV array. Mind you, modeling and usage can vary widely, but this gives us a starting point. We use NREL's PV Watts program to get an approximation of the PV array size, and then work with the PV installer to fine tune that based on their product lines and more accurate solar modeling. New buildings are relatively straightforward to be fine, but retrofits, arguably the bigger, more urgent need, tend to be more complex. We find the energy model helps us and our clients visualize the value of retrofit components. This example is for a classic Chicago 2 flat. We use the model to show overall energy reduction, furnace size requirement, annual energy costs along the way. With this knowledge, we can design the passive retrofit so that a PV array that fits on the roof can get us to our target EUI. The energy reduction demonstrated here is widely achievable in our Climate Zone 5 older buildings. They tend to waste most of the energy that comes their way due to low insulation and air tightness levels. We must massively scale up the pace of deep energy retrofits if we're going to decarbonize. And this kind of modeling is a tool to guide good decisions as we build a library of case studies. As the pace of cleaning up emissions accelerates, architects who can confidently guide retrofit and new construction solutions toward low and zero carbon will be the more relevant and in-demand practitioners, I believe. I urge all small firm leaders to invest in the training, to make energy model part of your process, and to help lead climate progress in the construction sector. Thank you and carry on the good work.